So I'm to using this new technique of screen sharing. I'm going to show you the finished result first, and then I'm going to show you how it's done. So this is my phone screen in almost real time, very close. Um, you can see all my apps. I can do my pull downs. There, right there, is the trick. This is a program called HTTP Stream. It's a completely open source application that makes a nice MJPEG video stream out to your local network, and it works really good. So I'll open up Mastolab, and you see, oh, no tooth display. Boom, I got Mastolab running. It doesn't do the uh, point on the phone, that's a setting in your developer tools but it's built into most phones. Uh, I think anything above Android 5.5 has that feature. Um, but yeah, this is a really good way to show off what you got doing. Okay, so here's how I'm doing it. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna grab this little guy and shrink him down, kind of get him out of the way. That way he doesn't block our work area. I'm gonna bring OBS in. So now you're seeing what I see, and of course I got him down there, and the main one right here, and then the real one over here. Excuse me. Um, so the trick here is the program, which, uh, I'll, let me make this big again real quick, so you can see real quick. Eh. The program is called uh, HTS, HTS Screen, Screen Stream, if you would. Now what this does is makes a MJPEG stream sent to uh, this address and this port. It, right now it's um, encoding the JPEGs at 80% compression, 50% size, which works really good, especially if you're presenting a, you know, a vertical on a horizontal thing like I'm doing now. And of course you've got your bitrate, so that's something to keep in mind here. And because it's doing this, it doesn't take very much processing power for your, your phone to do. Um, I'm running an old OnePlus 3T, and it seems to be able to keep up a little, little delay there. It seems to keep up pretty good most of the time. Uh, my Wi-Fi is also kind of shitty, so just keep that in mind. So let's, let's go ahead and shrink this sucker down. Get him out of the way so you can see what's going on. In OBS, if you click on your media sources... There it is right there, 192.168.86.127 port 8080 slash stream dot mjpeg. Now I disable, of course, the local file and definitely don't want to restart playback. Oh, we do want that actually, don't we? Restart playback. Um, so use hardware encoding. I don't know if that helps. Uh, hide sources when playback. And basically you cut the stream and just disappears the element, which is great. Um, and of course it's gone now. Maybe I shouldn't have checked that box. Oh yeah, leave that box unchecked. <laughs> that's that's a good rule to have. Leave that box unchecked. But once you have that, it's good to go. So if you drop this URL into a basic web browser, you get a pretty up to date. This is really good if you are in a situation where you have a presentation you need to do on your phone and you don't have the ability to, to screencast through the built-in uh, Android casting, but you do have your laptop and an HDMI and a wireless access point. I haven't checked it out, but I'm pretty sure you can do this if you tether a hotspot from your phone directly to your device. Might work really good because it's going over USB at that point. I've also tried it in a few video players, but none of them handle it quite as good. So CVLC, you drop the stream in. There's some serious lag on it. I mean, it totally works. This will work in a pinch, but I swipe up, serious lag. I don't think it's handling the MJPEG stream very well. <laughs> that is an understatement. So I'll just stick with the browser. I've also done it with, um, with VLC not VLC, uh, MPV, my, my command line player of choice, same laggy things. I think there's probably a switch in there you can to get the buffering up and work better, but right now the browser and OBS really seem to be the best ways to do it. And I've been very happy with its uh, responsiveness and its flexibility. Boop. Um, so yeah, check it out. The software is free, it's on FDroid. It might be on the Play Store, I haven't checked. Um, 
Of course, OBS is open source and free. The whole stack from end to end, open source, uh, completely free. You'll never have to worry about having them remove it, put ads in it. Um, it'll always be available in one way or another. And uh, it's a great tool to put in your arsenal. Peace.